Okay, so we're dealing with a steel spring in this case that's being stretched. Uh, maybe a quick diagram might help as we lay out this problem. So if we have the spring in its default position, kind of like that, and three centimeters, and then we stretch it out, and certainly not to scale, but uh, eight centimeters, and then we say, okay, well, if our hand is right here pulling on it, we have an applied force there, and then the spring is pulling back on our hand. As we stretch it, the, sp the spring pulls more. So the more applied force, the more the stretch, and the more the stretch, the more the spring force. So that's kind of where we're at here. So if we were to uh, consider this a problem with a free body diagram, we might do a free body diagram of our hand and say that uh, the applied force to our hand from our arm and then the uh, responding uh, force from the spring itself as we sit there in this position of eight centimeter stretch. And so let's go from there. Uh, we could stop and say we're considering right to be positive in the uh, position of our applied force. And let's get to the problem. Okay, so we have our spring formula. And there it is there. And so uh, we have the K, the spring constant, and the delta X, which represents the change in uh, position of the end of the spring. And so, and then the negative, of course, is just indicating direction. So some people include the negative just to kind of, it's a good as a reminder of the direction. Uh, whereas some people, as long as you're really familiar with what direction the, the force is going, uh, you could stop using the negative at this point and then just at the end reflect on the direction. But again, a lot of people find the negative as a good reminder. So we'll just keep it in for this problem. Uh, let's go through. So our K in this case, we can see that in our problem and it, that is 200 newtons per meter. Okay, so we notice that that's in meters, so when we're dealing with our length change, we should include that in meters as well. Um, so getting to the length change, well, let's just, uh, first of all, do our subtraction. And so the new uh, stretch or new displacement is 8 centimeters minus the original is three centimeters. So the actual stretch itself is five centimeters. And uh, like mentioned, we need to convert that. And so five centimeters and however you remember it, um, if you wanted to use a dimensional analysis approach, always useful. And we remember there's a uh, hundred centimeters to a meter and we can just think of a meter stick and it's about 100 centimeters long and the centimeters cancel out and we're left with meters perfect and so uh, basically it's just the equivalent of dividing whoops by meters uh, dividing by uh, 100 and so there we go let's plug in our numbers so the force on the spring is equal to and again we'll put that negative in there 200 newtons per meter, uh, 0.05 meters, and the meters cancel out, and so that's great. We're looking for a force, we have newtons, and so we can work that out, and in our calculator we can find out that that's 10. Uh, we do look back, okay, let's think sig figs here, which we should always do at this point, and we look back and we say, uh, there are two sig figs in the three, two sig figs in the eight, and three in the 200, which had a, a decimal in the original question, which got missed here, I guess. And, um, and so the least number of sig figs is two. So that leaves our 10 as, if we put a decimal there representing two sig figs, then we're good. And that's Newtons, and we had a negative in there. And I removed the negative at this point just because, again, we just have to include a direction. 
And with the right being positive, then uh, negative would be to the left. So let's mark that in and stop and look back and say, uh, yeah, our spring force we predicted to be to the left, responding to our pull and uh, coming out as a negative or representing it as a left in our final answer makes total sense. So we're done.